Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 21 of Direwolf20's server play series. I'm on Forgecraft with Soren and Tog. How are you, Soren? Hello, I'm good. I'm yeah. streaming. That's cool. So yeah, uh, people on Soren's stream now get to see this like a few days in advance. It's almost spoilers. Oh, maybe I should look away. Maybe. So what I'm uh, thinking is, um, I would like to set up my monitors for my awesome Uber build that I'm about to do right over here where these barrels are. Can we get rid of these barrels? We can. Awesome. Make uh, it so. Okay. <laughs> Let's see. I'm thinking like actually like right here. Like I have my monitors already kind of set up and I'm thinking like I want it to be four by four actually. So Right. You may want to back up. Yeah. I definitely do. Someone's about to make a giant mess. Oh, Pretty it's much. sand everywhere. So I'm getting started, guys, working on some really cool stuff, at least something that I think will be a lot of fun and a really neat build and really helpful for the workshop. It's going to make people um, make it a lot easier for people to come by and do what they need to do for um, infusion crafting. It's almost going to make infusion crafting easy. Almost. What? Um yeah. So here's the deal with infusion crafting, right? It's really complicated. It's really awesome, and I love the mechanic, but, like, you have to do a lot of work to, like, figure out what items you need to get the aspects that you need to get the right aspects in, and you have to go and do all this work to get them put into this nifty little machine right over here, right? So there's a lot of work involved with aspects and with all kinds of other stuff with infusion crafting. So my goal is to make that a little bit easier, a little less painful. We're going to automate infusion crafting to the point where all you have to do is bring the required components and place them on the pedestals, and you you don't have to worry about the aspects being in the jars. That's the goal of this build. So last episode we worked on a turtle that can automatically insert a certain number of mana beans into uh, this chest or this uh, alchemical furnace here from a chest. So that's step one. Step two is being able to figure out which aspects we need and figure out which aspects we already have. And that's where the computer comes into play. That's right. Uh, now again, as usual, I'm going to avoid as much as I can uh, having too much computer stuff going on in the episode. So I don't want to have a lot of, uh, you know, coding. There'll definitely be like a very, very small amount of code where I just like kind of, you know, demonstrate how the thing works. But it'll be pretty short and I'll give you guys a warning when it's coming and maybe I'll save it towards the end. Yeah, how about that? At the end of the episode, before I wrap up, I'll zip through the code real quick to kind of talk to you guys about how it's going to work and how it does work. And that way, if you're not interested in the code, you can just end the video there. And if you are interested in the code, you can keep watching. That seems like an interesting way to do it. How's that sound, Soren? Nice. All right, cool. Um, so what are we going to do? We're going to probably want to have some stuff around. I might want to move this guy. So let me get some ME cabling. You don't have any ME cable on you, do you? No, but I'm in the house, so I can bring some. All right, yeah, if you can, that would be cool. Um, so let's see here. I'm just going to break this guy for a minute. He doesn't even really need to be there. It's just kind of like a place that I put him, so... But we'll leave him there for now. Uh, the computer's going to go there. And... We're going to have the rest of the monitors just laid out and ready to go. Maybe I can move this one because there's only one stack of bricks in it. Yeah. There's the monitor. Pretty sure that's the size of the monitor that I had. Pretty sure. You actually, should have the cable on you. That doesn't look right. Hold on. I'll be right back. Let me check. I think I actually want it to be 5x3 instead of 4x4. Four four. That looks better to me. Yes. I did a lot of the coding um, off camera like I usually do so that you guys don't have to be subjected to me writing code for what probably would have been four episodes straight because I literally did spend like at least two, maybe three hours um, writing this code. So, yeah, all off camera. Aren't you guys lucky? Yes. Yes. All right, so you ready? Here goes nothing. I'm going to go get my code, which, all right, before I do this, warning, paste bin, this code is not complete, so if you want to grab it to see how it works, go for it, but don't expect it to just work like the portal code does, or if it doesn't, as many people have told me, um, they have problems. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think the main problem is that um, some people have like um, different versions of open blocks, but yeah, um, yeah. but this will work when it's done, hopefully, 
Um, but for now, just be our mind, it's it's a work in progress, okay? So let me paste bin get Z O F B M six W D. That's convenient. Okay. Just making some changes here. Right. I'm gonna that. Let's see what happens. Okay, cool. So initially on launch here, we have nothing. So let's go make something cool happen. What do you guys say? I'm all about that. Now this is actually going to have to be outside because our aspects are on the outer edge of the wall here. So we're probably going to need to build up a little bit of an extra wall around the edge here to kind of cover this up. But fear not, we'll manage. Um, there we go. So first off, I need a wired modem. You can see I have a bunch of these ready to go. So remember, I told you and showed you last episode that turtles and computers can read aspects from the jars. Now, I don't want to have a turtle visit every one of these jars to read the aspects off them. That would be extremely long and painful to have happen. What we want to do is be able to connect to them directly. One of the really cool things that was added in a semi-recent version of Computer Craft, I think two or three versions back, was what's called a wired modem, which you can connect um, two peripherals to each each other using modems and it's real simple so if these uh, computer and monitor weren't next to each other uh, we could do this connect them up like so and then all we have to do is right click on the peripheral to activate it and you'll see peripheral 4 computer connected and peripheral 1 uh, monitor 1 here connected so it just connected these two peripherals very nice right so that's pretty much what we're looking at having happen uh, unfortunately there's one issue with modems okay one I would call it a pretty big issue actually. Um, modems cannot and do not connect to non-solid entity blocks or something like that. Do you know what I mean, Soren? Yeah, non-solid on one side, so. Yeah, so stone brick, even though it's not a peripheral, it connects to. Jars, even though it's a peripheral, it doesn't connect to because it's not a solid block. Um, so that's a problem for us. So luckily, uh, Mikey has added a component to his mod called the peripheral proxy. Okay, this guy is really cool, not too hard to make, just a bit of iron and redstone. I only have a couple of them, I need, I need a lot more, but I'm gonna go craft them later. What you do is you place it down and there's a green arrow that faces towards the thing that's going to be a peripheral. You also have to do this for chests, by the way, because chests are not a full solid block. Um, and then you just have to connect the modem to the back of it. And then we should be able to run this modem over here and into here. Okay, and we just have to hook up a peripheral for each one of these aspect jars like that. And then we just need to activate them all. And now, given the code that I already wrote off camera between last episode and this one, and given the fact that I might be able to get back into this building, hooray I can. Uh, you ready, for Soren? You ready? Go ahead. I have it hooked up to the three left jars. So do you see how many aspects of each type are in the three left jars? Okay. Uh, 64, 64, 64. Uh, one. Yes, and that is Air, Iter, and Sano, I believe. If we hit the refresh button, nothing happens. Oh, oh wait, did I activate the thingies? I might not have activated, I did. All right, so why aren't you working? Oh, you know what I might need to do? Yeah. I got an idea. <laughs> Let me restart. Hey, oh. there we go. Nice. There we go, yes. Uh, the refresh does not... Um, update the peripheral connections. It only updates the um, aspects and the number of aspects in the tank. Now this is some test code which is why it's repeating over and over and over and over and over and over and over again because I wanted to make sure that I had the sizing right for the spacing of all the different stuff. So that's why we have air, iter, sano over and over and over and over and over and over again. Um, and the way I color coded it is if the aspect has less than 20 it's written in a red text if it's between 20 and 40, it's a yellow text. And if it's greater than 40, it's a green text. So it's really easy and stands out what aspects were low on, um, in the jars, that is. Okay. So actually, let me remove um, that real quick code. So it's not a big thing. It'll take me half a second. Dun, 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 dun. 
It's up here. Don't mind me. That was just looping 17 times to say, hey, go ahead and do that thing. See? Now, no more crazy amounts of aspects. Pretty cool. Do you nice. like it? Looking good? It does. Cool. Kind of. Um, now here, it's only one, but... Here's the cool part. Right click on Sano. Right click on Sano. Ooh. Yes. Ooh. That's the code that isn't totally functional yet. Um, all the buttons except execute fill request work. But what's going to happen is you can specify how much Sano you want to add. So if I want to add five more Sano, I hit plus five. If I only want to add four, I just subtract one. Um, and I can change it as much as I want. You can't go less than zero because that would make no sense. And uh, you can go up by 10 or down by 10 or down by five. And then if you hit refill jar, what it does is it calculates how much Sano there is and just does 64 minus what's in there. And it figures out, all right, you need 63 to fill it all the way up. So refill jar just completely refills it. Um, I didn't add a cancel button, but I probably should. Um, and then execute fill request will um, <laughs> initiate a refresh and it'll eventually send a message to the turtle over here that inserts the um, aspect mana bean things. How does that sound hmm. cool? I like it, as long as it works. It'll mostly work. And you can see down here that um, 46 was the button, or was the amount that I actually said. I have a bunch of test code dumping information out to the screen. So, long story short, um, I need to craft a few more of these things, and then we'll be back. All right, guys, we're back, and take a look at this. We've got all the aspects here. Now, I did not sort them. I'm, I might write the code for it, but I have a feeling Tog is going to just be driven insane by the fact that these are all out of <laughs> alphabetical order, so he might write the code for it. We'll have to see what happens. Uh, but long story short, we've got every aspect in our, uh, in our Thalmcraft here represented. So, like, we've got Modus, we've got Alienus, and you can see, like, if the number's between about two and four, or 20 and 40 is what I went with, I think, um, it goes into that yellow color. Um, anything from zero to 20 is in red, so things that are low on aspects are shown up in red, things that are high on aspects above 40 are in green. Um, I did actually make it so that there's a couple cool aspects of it. So, for example, Profodio here, right? There's 20 aspects in there already, you can see. Uh, so we can bump it up all the way up as high as 44, but it won't let me go any higher. Um, it won't let me go above 44 because then we'd be putting more than 64 into the jar. So it prevents me from automatically adding more than 64 to a jar. Uh, we can also go down as far as we want, down to zero. We can't go negative. Refill jar will automatically calculate how much is needed to completely fill the jar, and then execute fill request will eventually send a message over to the turtle here. I haven't done that part yet. Um, so that's the part we're going to probably I'm gonna have to work on like sooner than later. Um, I'm gonna want to have a wireless modem hooked up here, and then I can replace this ME cable. Oh, thanks. Um, and then I also <laughs> need to hop over to here. So, um, oh, you covered everything up over here, Soren? That's what I was asking earlier. If you use, but I can move it again. It's okay. Need. I can just get in there. I mean, I can't be that covered is it okay so we've got everything here it's looking pretty good um this is what we built last episode um things actually look pretty good in there and it's working well one change that we had to make was i wasn't able to dump the items directly from the turtle into um the furnace here because it's trying to insert into the, from the bottom so either i could have moved the turtle into the back or the side or any one of the sides instead of underneath but i didn't want the turtle really to be that visible so i decided to just hook up this guy and what it does is the turtle calls a redstone signal and activates this to pull the uh, mana beans out as needed and then they drop right into the hopper there pretty cool right so uh what i'm going to do now is just whip up a little bit of code for this turtle so that instead of him uh running you know on demand he's going to run um pretty much when he receives a wireless uh signal so i'll be back in a minute a little bit of coding to do all right guys we're back and i think this is almost kind of pretty much done I'm pretty impressed. I thought there was more I had to do, but then it was pretty easy to get these two computers talking to each other and doing what I want them to do. So let's take a look. So first off, uh, we've got Potentia. We've got 64. We've got Order. We've got 64. I added a little bit of code so that if you try to fill up a jar that's already full, it gives you a little message like that. Order's already full. Please choose another. Uh, the same with, like, Victus. Uh, that has 48. So we can add to it. So let's say we wanted to add 5 or maybe even 10 Victus. So let's go find Victus. It should be down here somewhere. Victus, Victus, Victus. 
there you are. There's actually 48 in there at the moment, as you would expect. Ooh. So we want to bump it up to 58. Let's say that we have a something that needs to do in there, right? I'm going to execute fill request. Boom. Waiting uh -oh. for aspects to finish cooking. And if we come over here, we'll see a bunch of Victus mana beans showing up inside here. And some Essentia boiling up. And our little turtle guy doing his thing. Nice. Look at that. Now it's going to wait, and the monitor is going to keep waiting. And then hopefully we'll see what happens. I put about a 15 second delay after it detects that this inventory is empty. Uh, and let's see, if we come over here and we find Victus, where was it? It was over here somewhere, wasn't it? Yes, there it is, Victus, 58. Look at that, we now have 58 Victus. Haha, <laughs> that's cool. <laughs> I am loving that. You don't even know. Uh, I want to fill it up all the way, <laughs> refill jar. You'll see it automatically calculated that I need six Victus. So we'll execute fill request, and we should have gotten six mana beans dropped in there. It cooks them very quickly. Mana beans cook very, very quickly in these little things. Um, so, you know, we've got that going for us. And the turtle does his work. And if we come over here, once this thing refreshes, we should see 64 Victus in theory. There we go, 64. Now if we tried to add any more, it should give us the warning that Victus is already full. Please choose another. My work here is done. I'm pretty Refresh pleased. button's not centered. So center it. <laughs> I'll, I'll get to it. There's a, there's a few little minor tweaks I have to do. I have to center the refresh button. Um, <coughs> refresh, by the way, will only refresh the jar. So if this guy has just a really long distance he has to travel to, and he doesn't fill the jar before the screen comes back on, um, you can manually hit refresh, and it just checks all the uh, numbers once again. I wouldn't mind sorting this, so maybe I'll write some quick code to do that. But, I mean, overall, the functionality is there. So if you want to go ahead and infuse stuff, like, go to town. Like, have a good time. You be my guest. Um, I would only recommend that anybody who comes over here just refreshes the screen before they start doing things. Because, you know, somebody... It's not going to auto-refresh ever. Um, I could probably throw something in there so that it refreshes every minute, but I don't think that's necessary. Or it refreshes every five minutes or 10 minutes, something like that. But I don't think it's necessary because mostly, um, yeah. I, what I would say is just, you know, if somebody uses this and it drains Essentia out of the jars, it's not going to update on the screen until you hit the refresh button. Um, there's a couple other things I want to do. So let me make a couple more tweaks to the code and I'll see about sorting it and then we'll be right back. All right, guys, we're back. And hey, look, I wrote a little sort function. Hooray. It wasn't too bad. I mostly copied it off the internet. <laughs> <laughs> when in doubt oh this is actually a good question actually um is this still gonna work here perdito is already full nope. okay good i was I, I forgot exactly where i was determining where the button clicking was modus okay cool i had a cancel button as well um so cancel brings you back here without actually doing anything so everything's working for the most part um i think so that's pretty awesome messes 33 that is cool. I feel like we have to like infuse something right now <laughs> in order to use this. Uh, okay. I don't know what I want to infuse, but like, I like we need to do something here. Um, <laughs> I'm I'm a little too excited about this. You are. It's kind of scaring me. Sorry, but it's cool. <laughs> it's very cool. It is. Um, oh, you know what we could try out? We could try out some of the new armor from, Ooh, from Thalmcraft. Nice. I do want to kind of check that out. Runic armor. Shields up. Runic goggles of revealing. Here we go. Arcane infusion. All right, so I need a runic, runic headpiece. So if I want goggles of revealing that have some kind of protection on them, I'm going to need a runic headpiece and a slime ball. And in order to get a runic headpiece, it's arcane infusion with a gold helmet, scribing tools, Amber, Nitor, Enchanted Fabric, Primal Whoa, Charm. Oh, can't do all this. Hold on. Gold what? Helmet, Sign Ball. Oh, what? Are you going to get it all for me? I'm already here, so I'm getting some of it. All right, so a Golden Helmet. Okay. Um, a Slime Ball. Got that. Enchanted Fabric. I'm going to need String and Wool. String and Wool. How yep. much? I'll just get stacked. Yeah. Okay. Some Nitor. And scribing tools. Nitor, I don't. Okay, we do. How much nitor? Um, and is my wand in the chest or in the table there? Yeah. 
Okay. Uh, Nitor, I just need one for now. But um, if you want to bring more, that's fine. And Perfect. then I need a primal charm, which is one of each aspect or one of each shard and two gold, and a Salus Mundus. So I'm just gonna need a mana bean. I think I can pull that off. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think I can accomplish that. Do you have anything like uh, creeper heads? Bring me an extra of any shard too, Soren. Okay, so you need one of each shard and then one extra. Yeah, one extra of any shard, and then in order to get this. We're going to need, here we go, we're actually going to use this for real this time. Arcane Infusion for a Runic Headpiece is going to need 25 Potentia, Procantio, and 10 Tutamen. So, Procantio, Potentia, and Tutamen. Alright, those are already completely full, so that's irony. <laughs> <laughs> but that's okay. We're going to use them and then we'll probably refill them. So YouTube will be back in a minute when Zoran shows up with all my goodies. Alright guys, so we're going to check out some of the new Thongcraft armor. I want to make these runic goggles of revealing. Um, so, yeah, we're going to totally do that. Uh, so runic armor is some of the new stuff from Thongcraft. It looks like some really cool armor. Um, and you can also put some specialty upgrades on it that do some cool stuff. Um, we just need to arcane infuse that stuff. So we'll definitely play with this a little bit. So runic armor. So I need uh, the primal charm and amber. Did you bring Amber? But it's in the chest here, so... Okay, it was... Yeah, one of these chests this... have it. One of the Soren chests has Amber. This one? Okay, good. All right. Good thing we have so many Soren chests laying around. I know. Where would we be without them? All right, let me take all these things off. Okay, and then uh, Gold Helmet goes here. And then we're going to have... Iter, I think, right? Gold helmet, amber, primal charm, scribing tools, nitor, and enchanted fabric. And as if you keep amber, that page open and look down to it like a map. Iter, nitor, fabric. Scribing tools. Scribing tools. That thing. That should be what we need to do. I like it. Let's cross our fingers. Oh. So it's draining some of the aspects out, and we're going to keep an eye on things, and hopefully things don't get totally destroyed. We need to um, put some protections around here to prevent issues around this infusion table. Okay. We'll get to that eventually. More candles, some crystal clusters, and some more heads and stuff would probably be a good idea. We'll get to it. Candles? How do you make them? Huh? Candles. Is it um, a normal recipe? It's uh, in the Thaumonomicon. Ooh. And in the eye. Is it? Magic Tallow. Yeah, you need Magic Tallow. That's in the Thaumonomicon. Hey, cool. We got this right. going. Cool. All right, so we've got that. So this is a headpiece, apparently. Ooh, and it doesn't actually render any armor. That's neat. Because it's actually like a magical protection. It's not actual armor. It's like magical. And I have to figure out how the charging works. Um, huh. But now, if we want, we can infuse it with our stuff. So all we need is a slime ball and our goggles are revealing. Slime ball and goggles are revealing. Maybe these goggles are revealing. I'm concerned that with them being enchanted, it might actually not work. But I believe that that's all we have to do. Now, for this to work, we need permutatio 25 and percantio 25. So percantio we have 64, but permutatio we've only got 18. Let's refresh to make sure we have the latest numbers. Oh, we only have 39 per Cantio. That's because we just used some, remember. So if we need to get up to, uh, so let's get like just plus, uh, let's just put 10 in there. Does that sound like a good number? Sure. 10 more per, per, per Cantio or permutatio. That's the one I'm doing, yes. 10 more of that, please. Thanks, Mr. Gollum. Haha, <laughs> that is so cool. <laughs> You don't know how long I've been kind of like planning out this build, and the fact that it's actually <laughs> working now is really cool to me. Yeah. So we've got 28 per Mutatio, we've got 39 per Cantio. That should be enough for my runic goggles. So let's make them. Go, 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 go. All right, I had a feeling that might not work. Do you have goggles of revealing by chance that aren't enchanted? Yeah. Okay, cool, I'll trade you. <laughs> 
These are damaged too. I imagine if they're damaged, it's also not going to be good. So I'm going right, to repair them real quick. It looks fine in the. Uh, yeah. I'll what that? It looks fine. It looks fine. Uh, yeah, the, 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 thumb the, comic, con, okay. the thumb and the thumb icon shows uh, any oh. damage value. It kind of scrolls through them all. So. Oh, you know what? Also, the it's goggles are in the middle, not the runic head piece. So. Oh, okay, so I'll give you Unless you well. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter. I mean. You want to see if it maintains the enchantment? I doubt very highly that it would. Um, let's just get this going. There it goes. Hooray! We're gonna have goggles of revealing now that have like cool things on them. I'm hoping that I can actually still put the runic armor upgrades on the goggles of revealing headpiece, but I guess we'll see. Maybe? We'll find out. If I can't, I can't, and I'll live. Mm. Oh, right, you can't see how many aspects are remaining without the um, goggles on. Goggles. Yeah, yeah, you're good. Cool. All right, Ooh. so I've got some awesome goggles of revealing. Nice. Ooh, and I still see them. Nice. Whoa, I've got, like, things happening. Things are happening to my heart bar. Oh, it's like a shield recharge kind of thing. Yeah, look look at your hearts when you have them on. Ooh. Fancy, right? Let's actually read this runic armor. Um it uh does cool stuff. Charms and seals and similar protective devices worn with your everyday clothes. That's cool. Uh create a barrier of magical energy that wards out most types of damage. The armor has a pool of hit points from which damage is subtracted first, protecting the wearer from all harm. Once this pool is depleted, the wearer starts taking damage as normal. The pool is replenished over time, but when depleted, the armor offers protection roughly equivalent to that of leather armor. Um okay, cool. That's neat. I'll test that? Yeah, go ahead. Hit me with something. Uh oh, there we go. Okay. I'm ready. Oh Whoa. yeah, look at that. It it completely removed all the charge. And Did you then... see the effect on? No. Okay, hold on. That's Let me see cool. This for a second. It also um it also You're gonna want to see this. It it's really cool. Look at my heart bar when you hit me with that. I'm uh, watching. I'm ready. ready you again? Or yeah. Oh, okay. that is cool. That yeah. is awesome. Do you yeah, see the effect around yeah, you? Yeah, I do. There's like a shield around me. Okay. That is cool. Yeah. Hit me again. It's like the Halo shield. Hit me again. <laughs> do it again. That's great. I want to see it again. Oh, that is awesome. That is really awesome. <laughs> it also, um, here, why don't I, I'll, I want to do it to you so you can see what it does to your heart bar. <laughs> like, look at your heart bar because it actually, those little runes on your hearts. You ready? Yeah. Ooh. See how they're like gone and then they're climbing back up? Well, okay, you need to do more damage than one. Okay. Actually, use your sword. There you go. How's that? Nice. Is that cool? Okay. All right, I want I want all that armor now, like right now. I need that all. Me too. I really, we, really okay, need all so that armor. <laughs> I'll go to work or the house. You tell me what we need to get two of each. All right, YouTube will be back. All right, guys, so it's going to take a lot of work to get this armor, but me and Soren are going to work on it because we're both super excited about this stuff. It's really cool. Um, but there is something I want to show you, and that is the new research mechanic that I believe is in the super-duper latest as an updated today version of Thalmcraft. Um, so uh, I want to research the arcane doors and pressure plates. So in order to do that, uh, remember there's two ways you can research things. And I guess the things with like the lighter background are things you can click on, and it just gives you the research automatically. Um, and then there is other types where you can pick and choose your research. So instead of having to like just randomly start researching and hope you get what you're looking for, what you do is you click on what you want and it adds a research note for that thing. So here we go. I got a research note for that and then I can drop it in here and oh boy, this is confusing and different. Ah, <laughs> I think the research notes goes up here. Oh, look at this. It's a whole new mini game. Cool. Yep. How does this mini game work? Oh wow! Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Um, how does this work? <laughs> Do you know how this mini game works? Uh, there, armor and no, that uh, you drag them I'd... over. Right. In some form of link. I'm not sure how the links are formed exactly, but I do know armor and it might have to alternate. Okay. And it's, I 
it's either but, the next one is made up of the first one or vice versa. They have to be made up. One has to be made up of the other one. Oh, oh I see. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I see that. Okay. Okay. Do I have to link all four of them together? Yes. Okay. Not, like, not individually together. They just all have to be linked to at least one other one. They have to be linked to one other one. Okay. Yeah. But they don't have to all be linked together? The total, like, all four of them have to all be linked together total. Yeah. But, okay. like, you don't have to link one to all other three. I uh, gotcha. Yeah. Did nobody watch this video? Made a video. Nice, right? someone. No. I know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, nobody actually I bet do I know. Research? Yeah, I know. We're terrible. But um, I don't actually have uh, much research left to do, so um, I have a few. Mostly Thumb and Tinker stuff. Spiritus is life and death. I know that. <laughs> I think all the mod authors now are like, hexagons are on the brain. This is tricky and confusing. Because I made, a, made an arrow yesterday. It's like, all right, I want a hexagons on it. Team Rob's like, maybe we should do less hexagons. Okay, I'll do something <laughs> else. I made a different pattern entirely. It had six operations in it. Like, six! Hexagon! No! I didn't make the chest. Uh... We're sorry, Asnard. We're noobs. We are giant noobs is what we are. <laughs> so, uh, how do you place adverts, Dyer? You drag over. Yeah, it's like a drag and drop type deal. Oh, uh, so you still yeah, use she... up, like, an aspect for each icon you put on there, or what? It would appear to be, yes. Yeah, you do. And if you remove it, you don't get it back, I don't think. Alright. Because, like, I see you. This guy is mode. I see you placing gears, but it still the same amount <laughs> machina it might, it might not be, be yours. it's it's yours not mine uh humanus is bestia and brain bestia is what that's modus and life victus okay so victus might be a link between cognito which is Spiritus. So, it's nice that you can hover over them and you get what it's made out of now. Yes, okay. that's very necessary. No, not you. Um, I guess instrument. Another big thing. Kind of interesting. It's, um, there's diminishing returns now um, yeah. when you scan things. So, if you're using the whatever the scanner thing, and you have too many of one aspect, you'll start getting less and less of it until you use them up. And it caps it at 50, I think, is the default. Each block has a limit of how many you can actually have, and you can only have 50 of each uh, aspect. You can keep scanning them, but you won't... Hey, I did aspects. it! <laughs> I completed <gasps> the research! <laughs> Yay! <laughs> See, guys, so here's how it works, right? Uh, oh, you stole it. Why'd you steal it? Put it back. I'm explaining. Thank you. <laughs> um, so, oh. Instrumentum has is made up with uh, Ordo and Humanus. So Humanus links to it. Bestia is made up of Modus and Victus. Um, but Humanus is made up, or no, Humanus is made up of Bestia. So <clears throat> Humanus and Bestia link together. Um, Bestia is made up of uh, Modus and Life, so those two link together. And then Life, Victus, is made up of Earth and Water, so those two link together. And then Cognito is made up of Earth, so that links to the Earth. So see how those lines are connecting now? So that worked. Cool. So that is the new Thomcraft research. You know what is cool about that? Is it's something you have to actually kind of think about a little bit. It's not quite yeah. as, like... It's not quite as effort intensive. It's more like thinking about it. So it's not like you have to. It's not a lot of time. It's but it's not time consuming. But 
speaking of time consuming, we're out of time. So for now, we got to wrap up the episode, oh. guys. Yeah, it's it's time to wrap up. So this is Diable Twenty signing off. Hope you guys have enjoyed this episode. I'm really pleased with the um, changes we made. So we've got a completely automated aspect essentially of refilling system we just come over here we say hey i need five more vacuous please and go and we get it and it starts cooking up vacuous and he starts filling up his jar how cool is that and there he goes look he's filling it up nice so it's filling it up it's got two in there now and it's going to do its thing um i will clean up the code just a little bit and i know i said i'd do it at the end of the episode but we're way past the time so i'll do like maybe a separate video to go over the code for those of you interested in how the code works once i have it a little bit cleaned up and then i'll paste spin it as well so you guys can get access to it all right for now dial 20 signing off hope you guys have enjoyed the episode take it easy <laughs>